We're in Paris, uh, which a, a quick review of my first two days in Paris, a quick review. Um, it's this, they call it the city of, they call it the city of love, but I'm going to call it the city of body Piss odor, asshole. body odor. The Dude, whole airport you, smells here's like how, an unwashed to, to woman's wit, vagina. To wit, how would you know what that smells like? Because I'm a woman. The way to win any war against the French is to hold up a stick of deodorant. Oh my God. The waiters, they'll panic and they'll run. There's been some, you know, shady individuals on the streets here. Yes. I don't, if I were to get mugged by a person in Paris, I think I would laugh because of the, the way they speak, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not threatening. I'm in this country. I'm trying to respect it. God bless this country. You know God's, no, everyone here sounds fake and goofy and not threatening. <laughs> and we've even seen hooligans walking towards us. Yeah. And at first I'm a little threatened, but then that you hear like, oh, ze, vo, 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 and it's goofy. <laughs> it's dude. You know how like, you know, the fuck it's boys, soft and romantic. But fuck, fuck boys with like poofy hair and like just Broccoli. People, people who make you uncomfortable in public. Yeah. They are so goofy here. Yeah. It's so, like you see, there's dude like it, it, obvious, it, everywhere in the world. There's like hype beasts and fashion dudes walking around, you know, whatever. But then you hear them, and they're like, "Oh, ça va vous It's so goofy, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Hit him with some. You ordered bread today at dinner. I Hit did. Him. Hit him with it. Je veux. Woo! Where's the pan? Du pan. Woo! Avec du beurre. <laughs> there's the toilet paper's pink, and the first time I used it here. It was soaking in the the in toilet, your, okay. and I thought I thought my hemorrhoid finally burst. Oh, okay. Don't try the McDonald's there. We did, because we got in really late after an eight-hour delay from Ugh. Iceland, which was, we'll talk about that. Um, yeah. But we got in late, and one of the only things open was McDonald's, and we all wanted to try it, so we went to McDonald's. Ass, ass, bro. Yeah. But they have like this ranchy dill sauce that i like but the burger the sauce was good the burger legit almost yeah. made me gag it was so bad it just tasted like old old mcdonald's it was really bad i didn't like it royale cheese yep i tried one i'm sorry but mcdonald's in the states is just better in every way uh, but it's less healthy that's fine that's, i'm not that's I'm, why it's better i have been trying to dry my clothes for two days and i cannot figure out the dryer and this is not bait I need everybody to hear this. It's steam. I have is been trying to dry. Yes! <laughs> I have been trying to dry my clothes for two days. And this is the crazy thing. Every time. You <laughs> saying real voice? <laughs> every time. I'm starting to get high again. <gasps> pitched. Every time I put the clothes into the, this dryer that we have here, uh -huh. they come out in two hours, hotter and wetter. Every single time. You're doing it wrong. You're, you are, you're drunk. Can, I, can we talk about Iceland? Yes. We went to Iceland. We went yes, secretly, we though. I don't tell people when I'm starting a vacation um, for obvious reasons. Yeah. But we, we went to Iceland first. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to review Iceland. Where's where's my Icelandic people in chat? Woo! Disa doodles! Your country sucks! Yep. Uh, no, okay. We did everything good to do in two days. And we so, back. damn. <laughs> Lowest crime. Yes. Uh, uh, happiest people. It's because it's simple. No homeless population. I hated the country. Yeah. I really didn't like the country at all. It's, it's, it's also because it was cold. Okay, but the, where we stayed was very pretty and cute. Um, no, this is... But it's like the majority of anything outside of that is just nothing. It's just rock. So yeah, Iceland was like, had spurts of like some of the most beautiful shit I've ever seen. But it was just like one of the most cold... De what, are you okay? Huh? One of the most <clears throat> cold, depressing, isolating places I've ever been to in my entire life. Yeah. I mean, it was it was... Re Reykjavik? Yeah, Reykjavik. Reykjavik, Re this little Reykjavik? city, right? Yeah. It's, which is it's small town vibes. Mm -hmm. Tiny little town, little like, shops. Almost like, it's, it's almost like fake pioneer village feeling. And then it's, that's it. And then you zoom out and it's just Nothing. wasteland. Yeah. Like, like miles and capital, miles of yeah. ice cold death land single road mm -hmm. nothing yeah we did a helicopter tour over a volcano yes it was very cool i'd like to review that yeah okay when we first took off it was very smooth and i was like oh this, is eight, this ain't so bad <laughs> i was told by a helicopter rider that <laughs> it's nothing like flying and any sort of turbulence you feel is almost really smooth let me tell you something. Chad. Let me let me let me explain something. You ever been on a roller coaster? There's that that fear you get, but you know you're safe. Okay. A <laughs> it's that without the safety. So a helicopter. You get the the, the stomach drop every yes, once in a while. Yes, a helicopter like, is that feeling of the drop of yeah. a roller coaster or a turn. But mm -hmm. you know, 
There's nothing fake about it. And at any moment, so any sorry, moment, your pilot can have a heart attack and you die this horrible panic death as you plummet to just explode and fucking die. Yes. Also, the Sounds helicopter like pilot was so chill that when we got there, we thought he was a part of like the excursion. Oh, yeah. We thought that he was waiting also to go on the helicopter. And there. eventually we're walking, around, we're walking around the whole building looking for someone. He's just sitting there chilling on the couch. We're like, okay, it's definitely not him. Huh? for being too loud. Oh, he's told us to shut up. I don't want you to shut up. I don't want us to lose our Airbnb. Bro, see, this... Okay, hold on. This actually brings me to the next thing about France. This country is is one of the rudest places I've ever been to in my entire life. Yes. They're rude because you're Americans. I've noticed that a few times, actually. People yeah. just being, like, weirdly short when they realize I speak English. Yeah. And it's it's it blows my mind. Yeah. It's like, oh, I guess that's just allowed. He said shut up way too many times. That's what I'm saying. American equals low IQ. He yelled into our window. I mean, I, I'll take the low IQ, but I feel like France's reputation is either cowardly or rude. I'd rather be dumb. <clears throat> Yeah. I'd rather be Fair. dumb on the national stage yeah. than being like the rudest fucking place to visit in the world. Or, ra or hold on, this is a better one. Hey, or we're rude. That's, I'll be rude. Your whole country has a reputation of smelling like fucking piss. Yes. Like, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It, yeah. it, but do you see what I mean? How even in telling us He's to rude. shut up, he sounds like, he was I don't like, He was yelling at us in French a long time. And then when I told him, when, when we were clearly English, he was, shut up, shut up, shut up. I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, shut up. I'm like, ah, you could, I'm sorry. Okay, where, 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 I don't even remember. I tried talking. to look out to see him so I could like meet his eyes to see if he'd be as rude to my face, but it was just black. The night. Okay, mm. what were we saying? Uh, oh, the helicopter. Iceland. Right. All I was going to say was, I was so excited for the helicopter thinking, this is going to be fun. Yeah, the second the <laughs> helicopter took off, I had a panic attack. It, when we first took off, you went, okay, this is actually not that bad. Was, five seconds later. Yeah, it was, five, it, it yeah was, but was, I'm saying when we t first took off, you were actually okay for like it's, 60 seconds. It's... it's, it's <laughs> It's not like turbulence on an airplane because yeah. turbulence on an airplane ends. Helicopter is constant turbulence. Yeah. Like from, from up to land, it mm -hmm. is like every couple seconds, it's whoo, ah, and, and, and also it does this thing where it drifts. So like yeah. if this is the front of the helicopter, it'll do this mm. and then it'll straighten itself out. Yee. And the pilot the whole time goes, it's okay, it's, it's okay. okay, enjoy, be calm. enjoy. This yeah, you scared me calm. <laughs> And he had such a thick accent. Enjoy, enjoy. This is the part where you enjoy. And they kept saying things like sometimes he was like, da, 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 Asia, Asia, Asia. And I was like, and I'm, sitting, I'm, and I'm, and I'm in the front sitting with him going, mm -hmm. and I'm looking in the back, like, what the fuck is he saying? I can't understand him at all. I'm so bad with people with like, accents. He, of course, because it's a tour, he turns so that the people on this side can see. And, and the turns, it was just. We're just going around, like, say this is the volcano. Good. It was like, mm, yeah. and he went the other side. Mm. What is it? The, um, the people were. They all spoke English, which I was super impressed <clears throat> with. Like, yeah. like well, yeah. I didn't have any language barrier issues like no. for the overwhelming most part. And no. then <laughs> the waiter. What? The, well, the talk waiter. about the waiter. He was just that was an autism issue. Yeah, that was. Um, <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Shut uh, up! Shut up! What was the other thing I was gonna say? Oh, the I will say though, they're and this is gonna sound stupid because the whole country's cold. Uh -huh. The people were kind of cold, but not in a mean way. They were to the point. Yeah. That they didn't like. I never felt Why like anyone use was... big word when little yeah, word do yeah. the trick. I never felt like anyone was rude. They no. were just to the point. Yeah. Very like um, matter of fact. Yeah, like matter of fact. Yeah. Why did the mods just put in mod server? Fuck it. Alexa play Hitler in Paris. Why? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what does that even? Shut mean? up. Mods Shut are up. good. <laughs> um, so yeah, the helicopter. I I hate to say this. Would not recommend. Petrifying, legitimately traumatizing at times. Yeah. Iceland? What about Iceland? Is that what you said? This traumatizing or helicopter? Helicopters. I went snowmobiling and mm -hmm. I have a fun story about it too. I'd like to share it with you, chat. I have a photo for that. Yeah. Hold on. So I, I have a photo of me too. Can I show my had too? diarrhea. Yeah, go ahead. You, you that's common. So this is where we did the the snowmobile excursion. Mm -hmm. And if you if you know anything about me, you'll know that this single photo gives me anxiety. Because although it's beautiful and very out mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere, that means there's no uh, toilet. So mm -hmm. the entire time I was having the worst diarrhea cramps <laughs> of all time because I was I knew I could not shit. I knew yeah. I could not pee even. Yep. And I was surrounded by Icelandic guides yep. who made me very uncomfortable. Here is me and my gear before going snowboarding, mobiling. So I want everybody to know I was very... <laughs> 
<laughs> I was very out of my element, okay? Your boy Wubby really put himself out there for this, and he really tried, and, uh, and I was very anxious, and something, something happened to me. So we had to drive two hours out of Reykjavik, yep. and then we got on a giant bus, off-roading bus, that yep. drove us 45 more minutes into a mountain, mm -hmm. and then from there, we had to suit up into snow gear, and then we went another 20 minutes deeper into the mountain. Yeah. So then, and then wait, wait, and then, uh, and then from there, uh. we got on snowmobiles and had to go another 30 minutes to get to an ice cave. Yeah. And the entire time, I had diarrhea. I didn't tell you this. I, oh. I had a uh, a tablet of uh, emodium, a poopy, <laughs> of emodium with yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> but I didn't have anything to drink, so I oh. went to one of the guys and I said, "Hey, do you have any water?" And he goes, oh, we don't get water up here. You need to drink from the glacier. And I'm like, oh, okay, how far out are we? He's like, oh, 30 minutes. So I'm like, oh, fuck. Did you I scoop? And so I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have diarrhea. And we're on the bus. And I'm like, I need to take this shit now. So I start building up spit in yeah. my mouth. <laughs> and I put the Imodium pill in my mouth. Yeah. And I'm ready to, to do the... Yeah. And I put it in, and my body it's just, dry. just panic freezes. And I... <laughs> Swallow all the spit, and, and then the there's, and it's still stuck starts, in the back in the middle. It's stuck on my tongue. Yeah, and the, in the back middle immediately of the tongue. starts dissolving, and it's like <laughs> it's the worst taste I could. And, and you I'm have like, no drink. And so I take it. You don't know this. I take it. I open up the the, the sweater pocket of the of yes. the first thing. Did you spit thing, into it? Spit into the sweater no! pocket. <laughs> and so later on the excursion, I'm like, let me check on that, and I go feel in there. It is a. Like, just a puddle of like mushy. dissolved puddle of like mushy white powder oh, and i'm like my God. there's nothing I, there's not a thing i can do about that that's right horrible now. all right you want to show uh this is at the ice cave it's me at the ice cave and this is me at the ice cave that's me at the ice cave so the ice cave was really cool we have more photos of it i posted a video on twitter of alex uh like in the cave, if you check my Twitter, when I uh, canceled the stream. That's why I couldn't stream. We were out doing that. Uh, and also I said, we're in a cave right now. No, that's not true. I had no service, obviously. Yeah. So I had that to was on the. That was in the. That was way gone. later. Yeah. Way later. I was able to post In the that. vehicle on the way back. Uh, okay. I do have another funny story too. I got a call. I don't know how they did this. We were on the snowmobiles getting ready to head out from the ice cave. Everyone was uh -huh. turning on the snowmobile. I have no service. My phone rings. It is my bank. Asking about, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? They don't care about no service. <laughs> they want your money. <laughs> they call me, and I'm like, uh, hello? I had no service. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, we're just calling to see your satisfaction. I'm like, this is a really bad time for me. Anyway, okay, so, snowmobile. Never ridden a snowmobile. Yeah. I've never even really been to snow yeah. like that. And we're riding whatever. Oh, yeah, and, true. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, this was very overwhelming for me. Damn, I didn't even yeah, think yeah. about that at the time. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm not lying, like... This is the thing I was most anxious about for yeah, like no, I knew a that. month in advance. I knew that. It was and fun though, right? It well, was, it was fun. You had. Well, I'm gonna tell that part now. Yeah, so, struggle. We had a few instructors and guides. Mm -hmm. One in the front, one in the back, and one on the sides in mm -hmm. case people flipped and broke ankles and got hurt. They were there to help and guide us and keep us on the right path. Yeah. So we're we're going, mm -hmm. and I go, and I, uh, <gasps> you know, I I I I sent her, bot. You know, I let her, I let her rip. I think. Mm. And <laughs> did you fall? <laughs> I'm riding the snowmobile mm. and I and I and I get thrown. Okay, so I, I go off this little <clears throat> this little doo -doo and I, I don't know if I went too fast or too slow. I actually don't know which it was, mm. but uh, the snowmobile completely flips. He flipped it, I fl and everything stops. And I'm at the front, and we're all something like, "What's going on?" I turn around and I see him hopping on one foot. And his snowmobile flipped over. I'm like, oh my God, he broke his ankle. His foot's broken. Something happened. The whole trip is ruined. I'm like, we're so fucked. We had to go to the hospital. That's your first thought. Oh, yes. my trip is ruined. No, his, and I said the whole trip is ruined uh, for uh, you, like specifically, because oh, okay. you're going okay. to be in like a wheelchair. We have to go to the hospital right now. So I'm hopping on one foot. My shoe and yeah. the shoe snow cover, which is this like additional sh 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 shoe <laughs> that you put on, <laughs> yeah. is on the ground. Everything, just my sock. No. And I'm hopping. And immediately everyone raises their hand, which you're supposed to do when someone falls. I also wanted to point out. I don't I, think anyone had to raise their hand. You, you stopped the whole the, line. I'm the only one in the entire, like, 12 <laughs> there people. There or back that flipped. <laughs> there was children. <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a mother.
mother with her child on the back. Okay, but that well, so. I'm just saying. I've seen mothers that's lift accurate. cars. Okay. I, yeah, I'm not, they're strong. Yeah. So okay. So what's up? So what are you doing right now? So anyway, uh, Shut I'm, up. I am immediately like mortified. Yeah. And embarrassed, and then I'm also like, uh, my shoe is missing. <clears throat> so hopefully my foot isn't destroyed because yeah. how does how do you lose a shoe and not hurt a foot? Right? Yeah, that's not easy to do. Well, yeah, that's um, so. But I genuinely I, was really worried. I was like, "Are right. you okay? Are so you I, okay?" I, 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 and it's too far away. You can't just talk. So nobody realized this at the time. So you, but but I'm hopping. But I'm not yeah. hopping because my foot is hurt. I'm hopping because I put my foot down quickly. That's when I realized I was missing a shoe. Yeah, soaked, you don't want to get it immediately yeah. soaked foot. So I'm hopping now because we were more on like ice and like water. Yeah, like there was, was not nothing. much snow. We were literally on water. So lose a shoe, you're fucking dead. <laughs> Dude, that's so true. You lose shoes, you're dead. Anyway, instructor so rolls up real quick, hops off. He's like, you okay? You okay? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm putting my shoe on. He has to go. It takes fucking 20 minutes to like fix the, the snow. Yes, he was tipping it, trying to like tip it at the other side, jumping on it. I'm like, oh, he's fucked. I'm like, the he's going to have to ride bitch to some other person in the group. The snowmobile <laughs> was not working. No. He said, and I see him look at the other instructor, gets on his walking, and he goes, yeah, and then the one at the front, because I was the second, I was right behind the guide in the very front, and she's like, and then like got on it and like went back. I'm like, oh, we're fucked. I'm like, <laughs> there, so there he goes. He's going to bring him back to the chalet. <laughs> so eventually he goes, oh, you're good to go. And I'm like, oh, it's working now? He's like, yeah, yeah, you're okay. Just be careful. Everything's fine. So we, <laughs> this is where the worst part of it, okay? That's not the worst part. So we, we, get, we, we get, haven't even made it to the cave yet. We get to the ice cave. Mm -hmm. I talk with uh, the, the group of friends. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I think I'm just embarrassed, but I, I think you my said, foot's... You said nothing's hurt but my ego. We don't need to tell them exactly what I said. Uh oh, we don't need to tell that them was this. just paraphrasing. It gets way worse, though. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm embarrassed, but like, I think I'm okay. I'm like... Yeah. I, you know, you always want to wait a little bit to see, like, you know, yeah. next thing you know, like, your legs really starting to hurt. Yeah, yeah. I was fine. We did the ice cave thing. Everything was fine. Mm -hmm. And the dude who helped me is standing outside the ice cave, <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, you're the guy that uh, that flipped, huh?" And I'm like, "Oh no, you know, that's not me." And he's like, he, "So then he, he's really nice. He goes, hey, don't worry. Last winter, oh. you know, I flipped, um, but it was a lot worse. Like I cracked my head. So don't worry, man. Yeah. Everybody Didn't he flips. Did he say he went under the water? Yeah. And the other instructor had to come, or else he would have died yeah. or something. So so he comforts me. Yeah. And I'm like, hey, man, that was really nice. I think he made it up. Well, hold on. It gets worse. Yeah. So I, we get back to the, to the base camp. Mm -hmm. The instructor comes up at the end of the entire thing. Mm -hmm. And he, he comes up next to me and he goes, hey, I know you from somewhere. <laughs> and I go, so I'm like, no. oh, God, no, this can't be. I'm in fucking Iceland in the middle of a mountain three fucking hours from the biggest city here. And the biggest city here is five hours from any other big city. Yeah. And he goes, I think I know you from somewhere. And I go, oh, what do you know me from? I'm like, maybe he thinks yeah. I'm a friend. So, yeah. And he goes, Twitch and YouTube. He's like, oh. And I'm like, oh, no. And, and you said, and you saw me flip. <laughs> no. And I go, I go, oh, so you saw me flip. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was really embarrassing. And <laughs> <laughs> he did say that. Yeah, that was really embarrassing. And he goes, hey, man, listen. He's like, I probably won't tell anyone. Can I get a photo? <laughs> And so then I'm watching this guy. Yeah, I got one guy at IRL. He did. So I take a photo with him, and I'm like, "Yeah, mate, don't po like don't tell anyone I flipped." And so he's like, "Oh, okay." And then I'm uh, we're getting ready. One by one, I'm watching him go up to other instructors. He does a da da da, points at me. Yeah. And explaining something, and then one by one, they're laughing. And I'm like, I feel like the conversation goes like this. Do you see that guy there? I know yeah, him. He's I know famous from on YouTube, he's, YouTube. He's the dude that flipped. <laughs> I couldn't believe they it. Live I, in Iceland, I, though. I, I got recognized like twice in Iceland, yeah. and, and and both times was like shocking. I cannot believe one of them was the instructor yeah, that for helped a me tour after I in a glacier <laughs> two hours out of the city. Three hours out of the city, more than three hours out of the city. Two hours was to get to their the bus, and then another oh, oh, hour. Oh yeah, and yeah, half. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a nightmare. It's so mean. That's what I'm saying, dude. Do, we, do you have any other Iceland stories you want to share? <clears throat> the waiter from Dill. You can. I don't even want to share that shit. We met a really autistic man <laughs> at a Michelin star restaurant. And we're all very cultured, obviously. So we were trying to not I laughed laugh. at him every fucking time he I, spoke. Every time I had to do one of these uh, and try to just not make eye contact with anyone at the table. Because he'd come over and be like, this here is, but he would have his eyes wide open looking at you. The fatty reduction of, and we're like, oh my Hold God. On. Yeah, we had um, a really autistic but guy. But he was very like, 
and we got bread and we ate all the butter and we asked him if we could have more butter and he went, uh, well, you, you can't have more bread, but maybe I can get more butter. He was so like, I, I will say chat. I don't think that you guys would. And I mean this because as someone who doesn't myself, yeah. Michelin star restaurants are not the play. No, they're really, it's really fun, but it's mostly because we're laughing. They're not, they're, they're so, they're so bougie. uncomfortable they're and bougie, bougie. And, we're just and, not bougie. and, and overrated i i don't know if they're uh, no, over, not overrated but it's like a really interesting experience but we're not sitting there be like oh yes the potato emulsion tastes really good with this dill sorbet like we're not we're just laughing being like this tastes fucking crazy they're up their asses that's my problem with it yeah. is like the staff and everybody is so snobby and like it's you don't know how snobby it is chat if you've never been yeah i feel uncomfortable ordering a coke zero <clears throat> yes none of us ordered soda and we're like do you think they have soda it's like we asked for you, cocktails and like like what i can potentially make a gin and tonic yeah, that's but, it that's all he said but that is it and it's just i don't know it's it's <clears throat> annoying yeah so then we ordered ginger beer <laughs> because that's the only thing they offered yeah ginger beer and lemonade <clears throat> yeah. art museum for he food he told me yeah. that they had sparkling lemonade i'm like oh i'll have the sparkling oh, lemonade yeah. and he went a wine i was like no the sparkling lemonade he went sparkling wine i'm like didn't you say you have lemonade he goes the lemonade, yes. And then he went and got it. We said that we were going to drink from the bottle, and he was mortified. He was. He goes, what do you mean? Not from your cup? We went to a um, a tomato farm. Yeah. In Iceland. Yeah, fucking riveting. No, it was actually really well, beautiful. it was actually really pretty. It was really pretty. And there was a whole restaurant in there. I actually really loved this place. It was probably one of the highlights. You That's get a... to eat in between, like, yeah, all of, the, like, the, the tomatoes table. and stuff. Um, I love it. Like a must, it's like a must-do. It's, in a, it's inside the greenhouse with the tomatoes, I... and also you get to see the bees and stuff. I wouldn't start... If you're traveling, I wouldn't start with Iceland as your first place to visit. No, but if you're like a well-rounded traveler and you want like somewhere else to like try out, Iceland's a cool stop. Yeah. Here, here's Rainbow right Road. Here. This is one of the shopping areas of Iceland. It, <clears throat> doesn't it look just like fake? Yeah. I don't know. I like it. It was fun. This was pretty. Mm -hmm. This guy had skis. <laughs> just kidding. He was just old. So a very cool tan guy yeah, was cool spotted. Guy. In Iceland, yeah. very tan. Also at the Blue Lagoon very, and various other spots. So, in fact, if you're traveling to Iceland and mm. you run into a very cool tan guy... Maybe take a photo with take him. Take a photo. Why wouldn't you? He's super cool. There's one in the Blue Lagoon, yeah. uh, which we went to, by the way. We that did. was really we fun. To, yeah, that was really I will fun. not be showing photos of that. It wasn't as warm as I thought it would be. There was pockets of heat, but it was like... Yeah, it was, it, was, it was cool, though. If you don't know what the Blue Lagoon is, uh, look it up. I can't show any photos because we're all shirtless and hot. Um, yeah, but that was fun. I liked it. Yeah. I saw so much old guy dick. Yes, I saw a lot of titty and bush yeah. in the change room. Yeah, I saw there was. It was I, too much. I, I kind of I, I, PTSD I don't, about it. I, I don't I, like people act like it's like a maturity or culture thing to be to for that like locker room shit. Yeah, I don't agree. I'm sorry, but if there don't this, be so comfortable no, being naked near me. I don't know you. I'm gonna explain a scenario <clears> where <throat> I go. Okay, how can you justify this? Okay. Guy in his 50s, yeah. leaned up against a wall, mm -hmm. completely nude. Yes. Completely nude in, in the locker, right? Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Another man standing, facing him, having a conversation. Yeah. Okay, fully clothed, mm -hmm. little weird. Yeah. That man has a child, eight years old, right next to him. Just hold on. Hey, daddy's going to talk to this guy real yeah, quick. Yeah, and leg up like... Just... Who? I'm sorry. Uh, how balls. are you Just so... Cover. Just like, do how, something. How are you so comfortable, completely nude... In front mm. of children yeah. in a locker room. Right. Anyway, yeah. Or just nude in general. It's not. It's Gross not. Gross body dysmorphia. Won't, Someone won't just said you? it's not sexual. I, it, maybe it's not, but I don't think it, it has, has to be sexual for me to be uncomfortable being With... naked in front of a child. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Yeah. You're a prude. It's not cultural okay, differences. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let him say, no, 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 wait, 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 no, no, I'm saying people are saying cultural differences, but in the locker rooms in America, Let him say it, though. Let him say it. So you think that it's totally normal for an old man to be completely nude in front of an eight-year-old? You want to show a child your penis. Well, let's hear him say it. He's saying it's culture, so let me... Defend it. Defend your culture. Let's hear it. Let me hear it. Go ahead. Say, I would like to show my penis to a child. Say it. I want to hear it. Everyone says it's cultural, but here's the reality. I think there's a small part of these people who like the voyeuristic properties of it. And I think there is some cope. Really it's traumatizing. I think there is some cope of people being like, it's cultural. I'm not saying it's a sexual manner, but showing. I'm sorry. I think there is cope. To I, a child. I think there is mad. I'm not saying it's sexual. There, no. But I, don't think I think for some people genitals. it is and they hide behind it. I'm sorry. Fair. I, know, I think straight up for some people, yeah. they are literally going, it's cultural. I'm just in a changing room. Bro, then take your shower, change and get out. Why yeah, are you, why are you chilling? Literally, literally. Why are you purposely literally, adding Dudes in their 60s just doing this. Sup? 
Hey, where are you going? Where what are you, are you doing? Why are you standing there? What, what are, you are you doing? Did you catch the game last night? Yeah. No, this, this is my culture. This is my culture. My culture, bro. Hey, how's your son doing? Come here, champ. Come on. Toss him around. Nothing sexual about it. Listen, I had to change too. I'm not you saying I toss him around. But, but there's there's definitely a way to do it and be modest mm -hmm. and respect the fact that there's a child five feet from me who forget sexuality probably doesn't want to see me naked. Yeah. So I'm going to respect that and I'm going to change as modestly as I can. Mm -hmm. You don't have he was uncut. You don't have <laughs> <laughs> to walk around and have naked conversations in a locker room. I'm sorry. If you want to say that's culture, you can still be respectful of other people and be like, ah, oh, maybe you don't want to see my fucking cock at the age of eight. I don't know. Wubby, wubby, prude. So you, what you're saying, you're going to go on record saying you want an eight-year-old to see your cock and balls. I mean, go ahead. Say it out loud. Say it out loud. Uh, which had the world famous hot dog? Yes. It was like great. It was fine. It was fine. It was fine. It, it was fine. Look it up. I wasn't huge on it. It was fine. Um, our flight got delayed eight hours while coming here. Yeah. We woke up at we were 4 a.m. We airport for eight hours. We woke up at 4 a.m. Had to drive an on, hour. On two hours sleep because our Michelin star restaurant dinner went for like three and a half hours. It, we got home. so slow. We got home and we were done with packing. It was about one. Yeah. And then we woke up at four. Yep. Uh, went to the airport because the airport's about an hour away. Mm -hmm. God, Iceland is just so different, man. Yeah. Uh, and it then, was really fun, though. We had a good time. Oh, is, I, I, I would... Definitely not change a thing. I'm so happy we did it. Yeah. I will. I don't think I'll I be think doing it again. I think itinerary was like perfectly as much yeah. as we could do. Oh, it, the sun never sets. No. Yes. We saw nighttime. We did not see for the first time again in Paris. Yeah. yeah. There was no like because there's only three hours of like when it's like going down. It was between midnight and three. Yeah. But it didn't really even go down. It was at one a.m. at one point. It was still bright out. Uh, yeah. It, the eight-hour delay kind of fucked us up. We were running yes. on two hours of sleep in an airport. We got to the airport around five. You and bitch. our flight was at 7 30 yeah. and it was brutal. we did not board a plane till 4 no. 30 and it kept delaying two hours two hours then four hours and then we decided to instead of waiting for that flight we switched to a different flight because we were supposed to be delayed till 3 50 but we switched over to the four o'clock flight and um the old flight ended up getting canceled so it's a good thing so we, we would have been stuck in iceland for yeah. another day guys I, I wrote this down in my notes but essentially if you're not a traveler or, or even if you are you should you need you need to learn this Flying is like the the great equalizer of the world. It doesn't matter who you are, unless you're flying private. At <clears> some point, you are just going to be bent over and fucked <laughs> in the ass with flying. Yes. There is no. I don't know. Whoever flies consistently, mm. there there will come a time, more than once. Yes. Where everything you planned, your vacation, your money, everything will be bent over and fucked in the ass. Yep. And you know what they're gonna do? The, Enjoy the it. They're gonna do. Not, they're not gonna say a word. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna say sorry. They're gonna be annoyed. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna be annoyed that you even came to the desk and wanted help, yep. even though your vacation is getting ruined before your eyes. It's yeah. gonna happen. It's, did you see it? Mm. Um, yeah. But everything's gonna be fine now. We finally made it. We finally got a good night's sleep after like four days. You guys are. You guys are the un. Uh, uh, you're, you're the the non-consenting family. Wait, the sentence doesn't end as bad as you think. You're the non-consenting family that I have forced to sit down and listen to my vacation talk. I'm not gonna go through slides and make you guys, see, we're not gonna do all that. I'll give you an overview, because listen, I, I personally hate when somebody comes back from a vacation and they're asked about it and all they can do is yap about how fucking good it was. If my, if my friends went on vacation and I didn't go, and I asked how it was, I want short, I want sweet, I want to the point. I wanna know what I should see, I wanna know what I shouldn't see, and that's it. What should I see in Paris? I will help you answer that. You should see uh, departing flights and then look for your hometown. <laughs> Non-stop flight to, and then just any, literally anywhere else. One of them just said, this plane will crash into the ground. I'm like, I mean, it, it leaves in 10. Do you wanna, we could get on. <laughs> Is Paris that bad? No, okay, no. Let me, let me, no. And and overall, just know, I'm gonna save my detailed enjoyment of my trip for my family or for like close loved ones, right? But I will give you a short overview. I went to, well, I went to a lot of places. I won't include layovers because I think that's so dumb. It's like, well, actually I went to Rome. Yeah, you went to Rome for 50 minutes while waiting for your flight. So we're gonna sk skip all those. Where did I go on this trip? Where have I been for two weeks? I went to Iceland for a few days. I went to Paris for a few days. Nice, which is a place in France. Monaco. I would donate to whatever, like, like GoFundMe to nuke that place from space. And then I went to, 
Venice, which if you can take one thing out of my trip talk tonight, it's that everyone should go to Venice. Venice, Italy was uh, magical to me. Now, I'm not going to say I know anything. I'm going to tell you my experience. Uh, uh, the people of Venice were so kind. Everyone was nice. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe a city. I, and call me ignorant, but I know some of you are ignorant in my chat too. So this is for you. Guys, Venice is like a straight up water world. I'm not lying. I knew it. Like you ask somebody, hey, tell me about Venice. They go, oh, it's the city with like the rivers, like the gondola. No, motherfucker. Venice is like, it's like water world, bro. You literally get on a taxi boat from the airport. There are no cars once you get into the Venice area. There are no cars. There are no streets. No, no. There are no streets, bro. It's not there are rivers to the city. No, no. The rivers are the streets, bro. You get around by water taxi or water bus, bro. I literally, when we get to the airport, I'm like, what do we do? I start looking into it. I'm like, oh my, everything is water. I could, it's a water temple. Sounds expensive. Not, I mean, not really. Maybe, maybe. The cost to get from the airport about it over an hour to my Airbnb was like 50 bucks. That's not bad. That's not bad. Think about an Uber over an hour. The entire place is sinking. So that's, I heard that too. I heard in like 30 years, it ain't going to look too great. So if you can go, and if there's one place I would say, absolutely, I would go to Venice for a couple days. It was the most beautiful city I've ever been to. Was the water clean? It's not technically clean, but it looked clean. Like there wasn't floating trash. It's technically like has sewage in it. They pump shit out to the ocean, but uh, you wouldn't know from looking at it. Did it smell? Bro, after coming from Paris, I don't think my nose functioned at all by the time I got to Venice. This is part of the reason I think that I liked Venice so much was because I came from Paris and Monaco, two places that legitimately, like it, 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 I, I, I want them to stop existing. You guys say I'm racist and you say that and it's usually about jokes I make about black people or Jewish people or Mexican people. And I'm not gonna get into all that, but let me be very clear. I am now racist against French people. If you ever wanna cancel me, cite what I'm about to say. Fuck the French. And I'm speaking with a very broad brush right now. They, they're, it's like, well, it's the culture. Fix your fucking culture, okay? I don't care. I hate it there. It was awful. The people, f I'm so, and you know what? It feels so good to finally speak my mind. You fucking losers in France. You fucking suck. Your whole, everything in Paris. By the way, maybe not all of France. Fine. There's probably great beauty outside of Paris, but your main tourist spot can suck the thickest part of my cock. Oh my God. Oh, well, you know, American tourists are, I don't care. I'm not rude when I'm walking around. I'm very nice. I'm very you know how many people just, they hear English and they just fucking stare you down. Bro, I've worked in customer service. I've had people come in who don't speak English. I am, so, I was so kind. I am so nice. I'm, because if you're not, you get labeled a piece of shit racist in America. Dude, if someone came through my line at the grocery store speaking Spanish and I glared at them and turned to my coworker and said some fucked up stuff and started laughing, I could lose my job over that, bro. You can't be racist against the French because they're literally not people. <laughs> Europe shares your view. Yo, we got to stand strong, Europe. Yo, honestly, someone needs to get into France and take it over. Straight up. Someone needs to invade that place. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Yo, someone's got to get on that, dude. I started in Iceland. Iceland, where are my Icelandic homies at? Where you at? Your country is barren. Iceland was one a very beautiful place to visit. Very cold. Uh, to anyone wondering, here's what how you should, if you're going to go to Iceland, go for like a day. Do it to hop to, to EU, like to, to any of those countries over there. Uh, not a whole lot to do. Very cold, very barren. I'm, I feel like I saw Iceland. I feel like I'm done. I'll never go back. I would recommend it, but that's Iceland. I went on a, dude, I went on a helicopter tour over a volcano and uh, going, leading into the tour, someone in our group, I was like, hey, you've been on a helicopter. Tell me how it is. And they're like, oh, it's like, um, it's like flying, but smoother. Like imagine being in a plane, but like less turbulence. So now that that lying idiot is out of the way, I'd like to tell you guys how flying in a helicopter actually is. It is basically the worst part of flying in a plane, but constantly. It is nonstop 
Kobe Bryant anxiety inducing. I'm going to fucking die. The Jesus nut is going to break. I'm going to crash. Holy shit. Constant turbulence. I'm never getting on a helicopter again. I cannot believe how terrifying it is. It is constant, like, stomach drops. And like, oh, we're gonna look at the volcano now. Homie turns sideways as we're going, I couldn't deal with it. You're just a pussy. Bro, you're not, you, I guarantee you haven't been in a helicopter. I just know it. I just know, because I feel like people who've been in helicopters can go, yeah, it's, that's scary. How are you strapped in to the hood? They put me right on the hood like this. Like picture Rose from Titanic. They put me on the hood like this. There's a reason Scene Bean would rather climb the fucking mountain in New Zealand than take a helicopter to the set of Lord of the Rings. Bro, that is such a good fucking point. Sean Bean would would, would rather walk. Okay, that's crazy. I don't know if I do that, but I don't blame him. It's scary. I, I, I The thing too, I was talking to my dad about it because my dad picked me up from the airport last night at like 5 a.m., which we'll talk about. Uh, and he, I was like, dad, have you ever been in a helicopter? And he's like, nope. He's like, I'm tired of hearing a celebrities die. He's like, I'm not important enough. I would die. I wouldn't even make the news. I'm like, damn, dad. Like, that's crazy. That's why you're not getting a helicopter. But that's such a good point. I, I really like genuinely, if I would have known how rough it would have been, I wouldn't have done it. But now that I've done it, it's really cool to be like, yeah, I took a helicopter over an Icelandic volcano. Sounds cool, right? I sound like cultured and shit. Fuck that. I almost shit my pants. When we showed up to the, to the flight, our pilot was sitting there just totally just laying like this in a chair. He was reading a magazine and we go and we sit next to him. We think he's going to be on the flight with us. And he goes, oh, are you here for the tour? Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Puts his vest on. Oh, no, we got to go. Like, who are you? What do you mean? The volcano is live now in Iceland. Yeah, you're welcome. You know how many earthquakes there were when we were there? Okay. It's because I was slinging, bro. There wasn't a, there wasn't a blonde, blue-eyed woman who was safe in town, bro. I got laid zero times. Uh, it's because you were walking. That's so mean. You nutted in the volcano. Yeah, I was cooking a boner up the entire time. And right as he turned, I just... Ison was cool. I was happy to be leaving. We were So the problem was, the rest of our trip was set to be extremely hot. Summer in Paris, summer in Venice, right? Hot as balls. So nobody packed for Iceland. Kind of brutal, kind of freezing. Um, 50F is freezing. Bro, it was cold as fuck in Iceland. I don't care what you say. It was freezing. The wind was so unbearable at times. Went to the Blue Lagoon, which I really liked in Iceland. I would recommend that too if you go there. That was beautiful. What, I, this was cool. I'm not making fun of any, anybody, okay? There was a lady with her family, God bless her, or, uh, you know, Allah bless her. She was in full, like, is it called a chador? Or is that is that Sasuke's special move? She was in full in the Blue Lagoon. I thought that was wild. I'm like, damn, that's that's commitment, right? I uh, I I think that's where I would go. Ah, I'm gonna bounce on this. But she was in that. I thought that was interesting. I'm like, damn, even in the Blue fucking Lagoon. I feel like Allah would give her a break on that one. But nope, nothing. She she rocked that shit in there. I saw so much old man dick, which the subreddit wanted to defend. I thought that was interesting. I'm a prude for not wanting to see old man penis. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to I'm going to put you on to something again, pure ignorance, okay? But I know a lot of you haven't traveled internationally. It's expensive. So I'm going to teach you so you know what to expect going into it now, okay? This is a known thing, but I didn't know it. And it's because I am the ignorant American. And you know what? I'm okay. I think that the reality is I think that you're allowed to like the way the world works. I just like the way America works in this aspect a little more. Are you guys ready? Okay. In Paris, in Monaco, in Nice, these motherfuckers just prefer to sweat. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's wrong with these people. Fancy places, poor places, the fucking Louvre, dude. The whole, I wanted to say the whole city, but the whole country. It's just B.O., sweat, and no A.C. The only conversation I got out of somebody was in Monaco, okay? The A.C., at the, we had an A.C. that was supposed to be there in my Airbnb in Monaco. And I called the Airbnb guest, and he's like, oh, it's not working? Uh, you're only there for a day, so it should be fine. I'm like, no, motherfucker, do something about this. So he comes with a, he brings me a fan. And we start shooting the shit while he's setting it up. And I go, 
it's hot. Like, we need this. And he's like, you Americans, you love your AC, don't you? This man says this. Sweat is dripping off his face. He goes, you Americans love your AC. And I call, I go, I'm like, you're sweat. Look at how much you're sweating, dude. What do you mean? Look at you. And he goes, yeah, yeah, but we're used to it. And I go, my brother in Christ, you don't, ha you don't have to be. What year is it to you? You don't have to be used to this. Did you see any riots? No, but I almost started one. I can see why tensions are high over there, dude. It's so fucking hot. When, when a restaurant had AC in Paris, it was shocking. It was noteworthy. It was so hot and humid. You, you get to a point where you're so hot and so wet, you just stop talking about it. The complaining stopped after the first week because everyone just knows. You're just, yeah, I'm just wet. I'm done talking about it. I just don't understand. All they make Paris the city of love. Fuck no, dude. It's the city of a shitty mid-tier food cafe on every corner with pretentious women in sundresses smoking cigarettes, drinking their lattes, and just sweating their fucking balls off two feet from a homeless man who just pissed his pants and garbage everywhere. That's my first complaint right there. I don't know why. It's not a poverty thing. It's not an, a rich American thing. Paris chooses to not have AC. We went to the Louvre, Louvre, the Louvre. I saw the Mona Lisa with my own eyes. In fact, I'd like to share a photo with you. Hold on. I pooped in the Louvre. My poop was in the Louvre. It's kind of fun it to was. say, isn't it? New York City is pretty similar. Big I don't agree. I, I've Big been cabin. to New York, okay? And I, I, New York is hot, but I've been to New York and I've never once thought, oh, these buildings are too hot. By the way, I'm not talking about the outside weather. I think that would be a little bougie to complain about, like a San Diego kid going anywhere and being like, it's too hot. No, no, no. It's not that it's too hot outside. It's that where, when it's hot outside, what do you do? You go inside. It would be 90 degrees outside you, and humid, like you'd be just instantly sticky. It's like, oh my God, I need to get inside. You'd walk inside to a cafe, a designer store, a hotel, a mall, five, 10 degrees cooler. I mean, barely know. And it's like, why? You just want to shake everyone. Like, you just want to cry. You want to cry and you want to shake people. Now, before I show you these photos, I would like to clarify. When I say French people sucked, I will say this. The majority of my interactions in France were frustrating. The majority of my interactions with people in France were, were annoying. People were just kind of fucking rude. Um, too fat for France. Bro, there were people. We were in a group. Like I had a friend group there. Uh, first off, I've lost a lot of weight, okay? So lick my uh, skinny balls. Second off, there are people in my group, they're in, in shape, fat, skinny, all of them. Everyone was like, bro, this shit's too hot. I'm, th what you're saying right now is so beneath me. I'm, I'm actually embarrassed I even just gave it time. I don't hate everybody in France. I got a tattoo in France from this French girl. Very sweet, adorable. And she was so kind. She was so nice. She treated us like humans. I loved it. And there were a few people. One of the ladies on a train I took who was working the service desk, she was so kind. She could tell people around were being rude. And she was so nice to us. And I loved that. But I think that's the problem is it stood out to me when somebody was kind as opposed to it stood out to me when somebody was rude. Does that make sense? Here is me, this is my, one of my favorite photos. There's, there's a two part photo, okay? And the, both of them are what make them my favorite. Here, so the Mona Lisa, as you don't know, you have to wait in a long ass line to see it. I said, fuck all that. I just took a picture as I walked past the line, which you're not supposed to do. They don't want you to do that. They want you to wait in this line. So here's me with the Mona Lisa. You're gonna know how far away she is and how tiny she is, okay? There's me, there's the Mona Lisa, whatever. That was a bucket list thing for me, okay? I, I, I wanted to see, I, nobody else wanted to. Nobody else wanted to, right? But I wanted to glance upon the Mona Lisa with my own eyeballs. Nice shirt. Bro, this is the I'm sweating my balls off, I don't care anymore outfit, okay? I got to look at the Mona Lisa with my own eyes, and I'm not gonna lie. People say it's underwhelming. It wasn't for me. That was a, I will call that a core memory. I looked at it and I, it affected me. I was like, damn, like I'm here. This is cool. These paintings are beautiful. There's so much history, yada, yada. And then I got yelled at for taking a photo, not in the photo line. So I took a photo with the lady who said, you need to keep fucking moving. And this is my favorite photo from the Louvre was this lovely lady. I've got a question about the yeah. Eiffel Tower. Do What's you up? high five the other guy with one hand or both?
Okay. So uh, this was a lady who's like, you need to keep fucking. Is her nipple pierced? Extremely. Ex just only her left one. Um, but anyway, yeah. Oh, that's the other thing too, bro. Bras in in France, bras in Paris, very optional. I mean, it is alarming how much nipple is on display in Paris. I guess maybe that's a positive for them. Check for them. But it, it they, I mean, they got to stink though. Dude, the Louvre and all the art is so fucking gorgeous. I will say that. Okay, so th so I'm going to put you onto a tip that I would only say now that I've already gone because I don't want everybody to know this. This is a bougie tip, but unfortunately, I'm a believer of there are some things that if you can't afford the bougier version for, just wait till you can or don't do it at all. So, the Louvre. All of us, all of us that were going, uh, we all coped on the way to the Louvre. We went, oh, it's, it's the, one of the biggest, one of the most famous, definitely iconic museums in the world. It has the Mona Lisa. It has, there was a painting that was the size of a wall. It was so beautiful. There was so, it was the best museum I've ever been to in my entire life. Ever, ever, right? And we were all like, so it's gonna be air conditioned, right? It's gonna be air conditioned, right? Biggest museum ever, four levels to it, the fucking mo, it's gonna be air conditioned, right? Wrong, wrong, wrong! I cannot, I cannot believe it. We took a private tour because it was recommended if you can afford it, you should. And let me say right now, you need to take the private tour. Here's why. One, if you don't take the private tour, bathroom lines are about 30 to 45 minutes long. When you take the private tour, you get a private bathroom. Right at the gate, that's a must for me. I'm an anxiety shitter. I have anxiety diarrhea, okay? That is simply my life. Right there, boom, instant private tour, have to do it, okay? Second, air conditioning, there is a private area that's a little bit cooler. Done, boom, eat, done, that's it for me. Third, if you were to spend 10 seconds on every piece there, it would take you two weeks to get through the entire exhibit. That's what our tour guide to told us. By the way, our tour guide was a very sweet, brawless uh, French woman. Loved her. She was so kind. She got it. It seems to be that anyone who can speak English even slightly well seems to not hate Americans as much. Uh, and she was super kind and fun. Very brawless. And she was great. I think it was a hundred bucks per person for the private tour. So no, it wasn't thousands. Uh, it's something you could definitely afford and definitely made it worth it. She also took, we were like, we're like, lady, we want to see the most iconic shit and we want to get the fuck out of here because it smells like BO and I can't breathe. I'm not going to out anyone, but people in our group were close to passing out. That's how hot it was, right? So is that fun? No, no, that's not, that's not manageable. However, however, it was worth it to see some, I mean, we saw shit that was like, it floors you. There were things I saw in there that made me go like, damn, I'm just a dude living and Napoleon was a dude and he got married. Is going to Paris to see the Louvre worth it? Yeah, I actually think so. If you're stopping in Paris, see the Louvre. It's worth it. There are paintings there that, that will make you think about life and shit. I say, see it once, bucket list thing, move on. Uh, there are paintings in there older than America, bro. That you, there are paintings that are older than me. <laughs> like I said, I'm not gonna go into over. I have photos of everything. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about it. I'm just giving you my recommendations. See the Louvre. Seriously, I recommend it. Next is the Eiffel Tower. I'm gonna review this because this is where things go downhill. Eiffel Tower. Seeing it in person, I gotta be real. Again, kind of put me in my place a little. I was like, damn, like people are humans and shit. Like there are people out here building this shit and like. I have the I still I have the Lego version of this and it's like it's like crazy big and like the Eiffel Tower and like like baguettes and shit. And I would recommend seeing it. I would. I think it was a bucket list item for me too. I wanted to check it off my list and it felt good to do it. I got called a racist. And you know what? Damn it, maybe he made me one. I knew this was gonna be the case, but I wasn't ex I did not expect it to be the way it was. We're there, we're all hanging out as a group, taking pictures, everything's cool, the Eiffel Tower, it's beautiful. We go at night, and there are dudes walking around with little trinkets, uh, chocolates, flowers, and wine. And they are clearly together because they're communicating with each other as they pass each other. I understand what they're doing. They walk up to us as a group, a hey, bottle, bottle for the ladies, bottle, huh? Bottle getting drunk tonight. And they are the most aggressive, salesman to the point where it's like dude 
you would get shot in America. And I'm not saying they should, but I'm saying so it, you, some of these people deserve to get their ass fucking beat. They, got, they were disgustingly aggressive. And I kept my mouth shut because when I'm in a foreign country, I'm a guest. That's how I feel. I'm unfamiliar with the laws. I'm unfamiliar with the culture. I am a polite, kind, distant guest, right? But I'm telling you right now, in America, this shit would not fly. This would last one night because you're a wussy. Bro, you have not left the city you went to high school in. I guarantee it. You can't even afford a prime sub, my brother. You, you are literally probably working 15 minutes from where you dropped out. Okay? All right? So maybe hold that L till you're buried there too. These people are coming up to us. By the way, we're not a small group. And we got dudes in this group. Big fucking dudes in this group too. This is not a... They were just unthreatened by us, by us because I think that's the culture there. Let me explain how bold it was, okay? First, dude, first off, it happened every 30 seconds. A new person would come by. And it wasn't, hey, would you like to buy this bottle? Ah, all right, walks away, which we did experience in Venice, which I was very happy with. They would walk up, okay? Some of them were nonverbal, which I'm just like, fucking get out of my face! Dude walks up. Here, I'll give you two different ones. Guy walks up with rose. Puts it to, like this close with a rose in my face, okay? Stop. No, I do not want. So then he turns to one of the ladies. Take, take, take. They're trying to get you to take the rose, so then you have to buy it, right? Buy. Buy the rose. Buy the rose. No, 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 thank you. They, and then you say no thank you, and they just stand there. I have never experienced, hey, no, please walk away, and they do not walk away. It's to a point where I'm like, if this was the U.S., you're getting pushed to the ground. You're getting a, a, an officer is going to tell you to fucking leave, okay? Or you're going to get hurt, right? Something's going to happen. So that was the nonverbal Rose guy. Very small, little Oompa Loompa looking man, by the way. He was one Rose guy who just was very aggressive. But then we had the wine dudes. These dudes were all, uh, uh, they were speaking to each other, not in French. Uh, they, I don't know. I'm not trying to, I'm just trying to paint a picture. I'm not trying to, there's no racist thing here. Although they called me racist. Probably because I use slurs. No, I'm kidding. I think they were Indian or something, and they were all communicating, not in French, not in English, but they did speak English, and they would come up, and they would try to schmooze you. Wine, wine for the ladies. Hey, you going to get drunk tonight? Anyone, anyone? And we would all be like, no, no, thank you. But no is not enough for them. When you say no, they go, come on, what will it take? What do you want? What do you need? What, what, we got anything. What do you want? No, no, we're okay. Thank you. What do you mean no? They would join your group and they would just start fighting with you. We were all over the place. A new one just comes up. It was constant every minute. It's like ads without ad blocker. Yes, dude. I developed a new system because no wasn't working. I did not see them. This is where I got called a racist. There were dudes two feet in front of me talking to me, looking me in my eyes going, bottle, come on for the ladies. They want you to buy a bottle. They're waiting for you to, and I, I'm not looking at them. I'm looking slightly above them at the, and I would just stand there like this. Wouldn't say a word, wouldn't acknowledge them. And then this is when they started calling you racist. They're like, look, he won't even answer us. He's racist. He won't answer us. If he won't answer us because we're not white, this guy's racist. And I'm just staring. They wouldn't touch you. They wouldn't do anything, but then they would just walk away. My blood was fucking boiling that night, dude. Now, I know you might be thinking, wow, this is shit, Wubby. Why'd you even go? No, I mean, the Eiffel Tower, like I said, core memory, seeing it, taking photos in front of it, it was beautiful. Fuck these people. I want them to know that they're making their country look horrible. Honestly, they really soured what could have been a beautiful experience for everyone in the group. They're just disgusting humans. Oh, we're trying to make a quick buck. Bro, you can be a salesperson and you can even be a little cheeky, but you need to walk away. You need to walk away when somebody says no, because you're at a certain point, you're just being disgusting. You're making the ladies, uh, uh, their country. They have no country. Wait, what do you mean? It's not their, it's not their country. Oh shit. Oh, right, I'm not. Whoa, whoa, I ain't gonna say, yo, yo, y'all taking this further than I was willing to take it. Whoa, 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 yo, chat. Yo, chat saying, I'm seeing some people in my chat going, it's not their fucking country. Whoa, 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 no, whoa. You guys want to say that. I'm not going to say that. Hey, I don't know the French dynamic. I don't know how you guys view those people, but they were horrible. I saw couples, cute little couples taking photos. They made everyone uncomfortable. And it's not enough to, no, I, I'm not interested, please. They'll fight you, they'll argue with you. 
That was uh, that was Paris. I'm trying to think of what else we did because we were there for so long. TwitchCon EU was shit, but who cares? Nobody fucking cares. It was nice meeting some of you guys there. You guys are very kind, and meeting some EU people was really cool. I love you guys. If you're watching the EU, you a real one. Stay strong. It gets better. How is Disney Paris? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I love Disney. And I thought, man, Disney is where the magic happens. I've been to Disney in foreign countries already. I, and, and the magic carries over. Disney, Japan was one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. They were so sweet. They were so kind. Disney Paris should seriously be burned to the ground. Disney Paris was the most fantastic way to prove to me that Paris and French people are born and, and bred to be horrible, horrible, horrible people. They are seriously uh, 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 behind in just what is socially acceptable. I really hope that Disney looks into that because I know the Disneyland standard, like in Anaheim here, is so high. You can lose your job for almost anything because they are trying to make an experience unlike anything else in the world, right? And I know Disney is a big company. We got issues with Disney. But Disneyland, they attempt and people put a lot of hard work into being making it magical, right? And God damn it, it works. We took Peanut to Disneyland, okay? And he wasn't into it. And at one point, he turns to me and he's like, all right, I get it. I get it. I'm feeling the magic. Yeah, you do. You know where you don't get it? In fucking Disney Paris shithole. The, the, the cast members, I don't want to call them that. You know what? You're not cast members in Disney Paris. You're motherfucking employees. You all sucked. You were so fucking rude. Every employee I talked to was rude. Nope, there was no magic at all. I couldn't believe it. It was like gas station customer service in Disney Paris. It was the worst Disney experience of my life. And I know you might be thinking, oh, what be your so No, I hope everyone hears this. Do not go. You should not go to Disneyland Paris. Here's, here's one that has st stuck out to me. I had employees, because I guess we stick out. But I guess you can tell we're American, either from the English we're speaking or just the way we look. I had customers there and employees like glare like like I'll like this like you'd walk up for a question and it i i don't know they would say i don't know i got to a point on the trip where when people started glaring if i saw some i would i would i remember at one point because i'm friendly walking up to an employee big smile on my face, hi excuse me i have a question not met with a smile not met with a hello as if I'm interrupting them. I'm like, what's wrong with you? I'm smiling, I'm, I'm being happy. It's because you're loud. We're not, you can see, the, the, I'm sorry, but the cope reaction is to blame us for being loud, bad American tourists. And I think there are people like that. My group is not that. We were not that. No, they hate non-French speakers. I know, but like, I want you guys to pause for a second and think about, think about this, okay? In America, there are parts in America that are like this, but we look down on them. You know, when, when I hear about places in other parts of the United States where there are people being shit on for not speaking English, we hear about that. We bully those people. We make fun of those people. Those people are at odds with the United States that isn't that. It, it went at work, if someone came through my line speaking Spanish, okay, I don't turn to my other American coworkers and laugh at them and make fun of them. In fact, not only would I lose my job, but we live in a, in a, at least in San Diego, right? I'll speak for where I live, where if that got caught on film, I would lose my job and I would probably be shamed for the rest of my life for being racist. Whereas my experience in Paris is it's pretty much open to just shit on people if they're not speaking French. And I'm not saying racism doesn't exist in the US, but what I'm saying is it seems to be in Paris just so, so openly accepted that if you're not speaking French, bullying, harassment at most, and at least just plain rudeness is common. If I was with a group of friends and someone was speaking Spanish asking us for help and my friend turned and made some fucked up like Mexican joke, we would be like, what the fuck? What's wrong with you? Why would you do that? Think about it like this chat where everyone's so cool saying it's because you're speaking English, you need to speak French. What if I just said on stream right now, hey, hey, when you're talking to me, okay, you need to learn English, all right? I don't want to hear no fucking Mexican speak here, okay? That's, how, that, that's what's common in Paris. That's how it felt in Paris. Here's an EU thing for you guys, um, and this was crazy. Ice.
I do not understand it. Your drink will be served room temperature. If you ask for ice, you will get one of two things happen. Confused looks or... Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, let me see what I can do. I, I heard some cope answers from people in the group that were like trying to figure it out. I don't think they meant anything wrong by it, but that we were trying to figure out why. So we Googled, oh, well... You know, drinking drinks room temperature is technically healthier. And I'm sitting, I'm like, we just ordered a fucking burger and cheese curds from Disneyland and a Coke. What does health have to do with this? Okay, that's not it. You do not get cold drinks. I don't understand it. There's no AC. It's hot as balls. They don't want to put ice in their drink. Cocktails are the one exception. But it, I, still, I would say ice is not common. The drink comes out cold, but ice is not common. It's not a poverty thing. We, in, in, we went to nice restaurants, Disneyland, a place that is expensive to get into. Can somebody, really though, can somebody French or someone who's living in Paris or somewhere, why? And I know what someone's gonna say. Someone's gonna say, oh, we just, you know, we, we just, it's not something we do over here. But what, you like your Coke room temperature? Like why? And, and here's the crazy thing too. All they... They have ice makers everywhere. When I order like a Coke Zero in Disneyland Paris, they go to the same machines that we fucking have at every fast food joint. There's the ice thing right in the middle. And I'll go, can I have ice with it? And they'll go grab another cup, fill the cup up with ice and hand it to me. And I'm like, so you, can, you have the option and no one here is doing it? People are fighting. Oh God, this is crazy. Okay, hold on. I didn't know, hold on. The ice thing is known as a scam. They'll fill up your cup with 90% ice. And 10% Coke. Guys, I will take 50% less drink if it means the 50% drink I get is ice cold. I will. Every time. I'm sorry, but if you don't agree, on a hot day, go grab yourself a nice room temperature drink. It's just not. It's, guys, I'm telling you, it's not it. I, I, we were talking as a group, and I just kept saying, I can't wait to be home and have cold drinks. Why am I saying that? I don't know. Sometimes a room temp Coke goes down so good. You, you, you fuck animals or something, dude. Something's wrong with you. We use ice, but less in the U.S. Oh, this, this is my favorite part, too. This is my favorite part. This was very common. This was, in most places, it actually looked like this. We got to a point where we started saying, uh, can I have uh, water? Can I have ice? Can I have an ice water, please? And they come back. I'm not lying. One, two, three. Three cubes of ice. That's it. By the time the drink hits your table, it's just like the floating particles of where ice was. I'm like, oh, come, to, come on. Why are you people like this? Is this why you're so grouchy? Some I uh, here's some notes about Paris too that I just want everybody to hear. Okay, this is important. Uh warm drinks, cold hot dogs. Got a hot dog in uh Nice uh and it was cold and I almost beat the fucking person to death with it. Why did you get a hot dog in Paris? Well, I was in Nice, so maybe you should listen. And it was also right outside a train station. We needed food before getting on the next train. It was it was a small cafe and we ordered the only thing on the menu that looked even remotely appetizing. And uh, I got a cold hot dog and I almost went America on their ass. Ubers there don't like using their AC. That's a great thing. Love that. They just like letting us cook in the back seat. At one point, uh, there was, we were with ladies, ladies of the group, and they were all in like dresses and shit. And we're in the Uber and we say, can you turn up the AC? And he doesn't really do it. He goes, oh, haha, yeah. And doesn't really do it. We get out of the Uber and the ladies look back and their whole ass and, and, and everything print is on the seat. Everyone's been sweating. The dudes not sweating through their shorts or pants. We look great. Dudes, you were looking great that night. Ladies, sweat straight through the seats or straight onto the seats. Lovely ass prints on the seats. And when they stand up, they go, oh God, nobody look. Nobody look. They're trying to wipe it. And the Uber driver looks over his shoulder. Now, I will be fair to him. He was being cheeky and not mean, but he went over his shoulder. He goes, oh, what did, what did you do to my seats? Uh, and I, I am the last one in the car and I go, because it's so fucking hot, dude. I'm like, bro, what do you, I'm like, we're sweating. It's so hot. What do you mean? It's like these French people, bro. It's like they're just, the people are retarded. Do I need to explain to you like how the human body has a way of regulating its heat? I took a train out of Paris. We took a train to Nice, and then from Nice, we went to Monaco, the worst city I ever visited. Monaco. I know it's not a city, it's its own... What? I'm sorry, you're right. What is it called? 
It's a city state. Oh shit. It's a city state. Okay, so in that case, I'm gonna start by opening a couple trade routes with it just to get them friendly, and then I'm, they're gonna be the first place I invade to get a good, strong city. I'm, I might annex the city or create a puppet. I don't know. I don't know if I want the the, the massive uh, like war mongering negative thing, um, but it does take you know 20 turns to make the courthouse. So maybe we'll just raise it. Honestly, we should raise uh, Monica to the fucking ground. Talking Civ, boys. Monaco is protected by the French military. Oh, so it's not protected? Fucking loser, rich, tan, leather skin, lonely, can't hold down a marriage, fat, French, fucking animals. All of them. You know what? You can have the most money in the world, okay? But you know what? The fact that you live in Monaco, I think that just... Th that is your cross to... You, you have to hold that forever, dude. Man, it looks so beautiful. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you guys why this is all bullshit. So this city... Um, the city fucking sucks. Um, it's it's the probably the worst city I've ever been to in my entire life. Worse than Paris. Why, why is this the worst city ever? So first off, it's very vertical. Uh, let me see if I can find like a good example of how vertical. Okay, so it's it's there's little pockets of areas and then huge like like think San Francisco, just huge verticals to get up to the next area. It is not a city you want to comfortably walk in. It's hard to. The heat is blistering and the hills are extreme. Okay, so we can just Uber or taxi. Well, unfortunately. Uh, Ubers don't exist in the city. They, they can't exist in the city. Um, and so the other option is taxiing. And taxis don't really exist in this city either. There is a monopoly on the taxi game. There's one number you can call. You need to schedule that call 72 hours before you need a taxi. There is one other taxi service that is 30 minute wait time, but unfortunately half the time they do not answer the call. We got off a train here and we had to walk two miles uphill to get to our Airbnb. We were close to passing out. It was, I was bleeding. My, my hand was bleeding carrying shit by the time we got there. It was the steepest, I mean, it was a nightmare. Everyone's saying it's two miles. It's not, dude, it was, the, you should see the hills. It was simply, Hundred. So okay. First off, let me tell you the luggage. Okay, here I'm gonna give you all the weights of the luggage that I remember. There was one that was 45 pounds. There was a 72 pound bag. My backpack was 40 pounds. My personal luggage was 62 pounds. Okay, yeah, uphill. It's fucking brutal. It was fucking. Br I don't care what you say. It was fucking brutal, dude. There's people that were with us that were in better shape than you. I, I, that's all I'm gonna say. And it was brutal. We finally get to Airbnb. People are close to passing out. Everyone just retires to their rooms. Air conditioning not working. This is when I call the guy and he goes, I'll bring you a fan, Americans. Um, so then it's like, I'm scared to leave because I don't want to get stranded again. So we finally figure out a taxi situation. We have to call 30 minutes in advance. We go. We, we go to our dinner for the night, which is a two Michelin star dinner overlooking the water. It was beautiful. It was beautiful and the food was great. And it was amazing. Very fancy. Felt very out of place. I farted. It was funny. It's a good time. Everyone's dressed nicely, but you got to remember in heat like this, dressing nicely is not like formal. Men, the dudes were in shorts, but like nice linen. Think like fancy guy on vacation. Linen, nice, nice button up, a little bit of chest hair out. We got the, every, everyone looked good, but we're also dressed for the weather that was unrelentingly hot and humid. We show up to the restaurant and the lady goes, hi, pants are required. And I, I call her out. I'm like, ma'am, it's, it's like, it's unbearably hot outside. I, like, I'm not going to wear pants. She goes, well, we have pants for you to borrow. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, I'll take some, I'll take some pants. So <clears throat> first off, I'm already a little turned off to this place. The walk up hill was brutal. And now dinner's telling me I need to wear pants. And I'm like livid because I'm like, bro, this meal is about to be very expensive. Okay, we all look very good. And now you're making me put on pants that don't go with what I'm wearing. She gives me two pairs of pants. <laughs> this is so, this is a good story right here. You're gonna love this. I have one pair. I take the bigger pair. I'm holding onto it, put it over my shoulder. The smaller pair, I lay uh, in the sink. Didn't know where else to put it. So I put it in the sink along with my uh, bag, my little sh shoulder bag. 
put that in the sink, lay it all there. And I, no one else in the bathroom. It's a private bathroom. So I go to take off my pants. And as I take off my pants, the sink turns on. <laughs> and I'm like, oh God. So I go, I quickly grab the bag and I grab my pants, the pants that I'm good. I'm like, oh fuck. I'm like, I can't wear these now. These are soaked. My bag is soaked. So I put on the other pair of pants. The only one that's not wet now. I zip, put those on. Zipper's broken. So I'm like, either I wear wet pants or broken zipper pants. I'm like, you know what? My, my, my collared shirt is long enough to, it's flowy enough. It kind of covers the zipper. Fine. So I go and I didn't say what, this was my subtle act. Of, maybe this is why they hate Americans. This is my subtle act of defiance. I go and I hand her the other pants back and I go, they're a little wet now. <laughs> <laughs> if you've never been to a Michelin star restaurant, it's the most pretentious bullshit thing in the entire time I'm thinking about Taco Bell. Or like Jack in the Box tacos. I just want canes. However, it's fun. It's a novelty to me. But let me be very honest with you guys. You're not missing out on much at Michelin. It's like there's no menu. They just serve you like 30 little. Oh, you do a mousse bouche. You get to a mousse bouche. And you get, oh, this is a reduction foam. And the chef ejaculated. And then now he's, uh, he puts foam. It's dumb. But it was fun. It's fun. It's a novelty. Everything goes well. Meal's great. We're all getting in a better mood, cooling down, cocktails that are cold, whatever. Nobody really likes the city. We're excited to leave. But before we go, the whole reason we came was to see the Monte Carlo Casino, the famous, world famous, where is it? Casino de Monte Carlo. Here it is right here. See how fucking vertical it all is? Look, 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 look. This is what I mean. Look at how vertical this is. Not even, the, look at my mouse, not even this part. If you want to get from here to up here, it, it is, it's, guys, I'm going to use a word here that you, you're, you're already making fun of me for using. It's brutal. This night's going to be, this night's going to turn around for us. We're going to have fun. And you know what? We look good. We look good. We look like we have money. I got, I got a, uh, in Paris, I got this little Gucci bag because it's cheaper in Paris. We got a tax rebate on it. I got $400 off. It was about 600 out the door. I was like, damn, I loved it. And I wanted to have a nice bag for uh, Monte Carlo, because I didn't want to have my little Nike bag that I've been rocking in airports and shit. Going to the Monte Carlo, everyone's dressed to the nines, we look great. Yeah, we're in shorts, but we look good, okay? Walk up to the thing, we're inside the, the entryway. Let me see if I can actually find the exact entryway. We're in this area. Walk in, lady at the front desk goes, oh, you gotta set your bags down over there. Uh, so, okay, we set our bags down. Walk back up, she goes, can't come in. Shorts aren't allowed. And this is where I'm like not even saving it anymore. I'm just like, fuck this country. Fuck this fucking city. Your city's shit. I'm, not, I'm saying that as we walk away, right? Under my breath because I'm a coward. But first, I'm like, I'm like, ma'am, it's like 90 degrees outside and it's extremely humid. Like, are, what? There's, you're going to make us wear pants to come into a casino? This is a casino. Like, we're here to gamble. And she's like, sorry, pants are a uh, requirement. Yeah, whatever, stupid, f fake English. Nobody even wants to deal with it. Everyone is so fed up, we just turn around and walk out. And here is the icing on the shit cake here, boys, okay? As we are walking out, I am seeing dumbass, like literally embarrassing looking old men. I'm talking dudes in their 60s with no sense of style. Think like polo tucked into some grandpa shorts just walking right in. That's when it hit me. We're too American or we don't look rich enough. Both of those things are enough to, so what I did, I planted a small pipe bomb. We said, fuck it. Fuck this fucking city. Fuck this country. Fuck whatever this city state is. I'm done. And I'm going to forever, for the rest of my life, act, just never go there. You guys are saying you're not rich enough to go in. I think really, it's, it's a, this is a big tourist spot for them. I really think that pants is a dress code if you're a tourist though. And I just said, fuck that. This is a casino. We, you are open because idiots like, everyone go in there and waste money there imagine your money not being good enough for a casino it's crazy we're coming to an end of my of my yap i don't have enough time i'm realizing so i'm going to save first off venice most beautiful city i've ever been to everyone should go to venice i loved it the people are nice the food was great best pizza i ever had i know that's cringe to eat italian food in italy but it was so fucking good it wasn't like normal pizza it was like weird fucking pizza it was so good any italians in my chat i want you to hear this i don't know if this is everyone's experience it might not be uh, you guys were very kind. The Italians that I spoke to, their English was fantastic. They were patient. They were kind. They were fun. They were sweet. They were joking. I loved it. The people of Venice were amazing. Loved you guys. Seriously. Shots out. I don't know if this is true for everyone. Okay. Maybe you went to Venice and you got pickpocketed and, and you got your butthole touched. But, uh, 
I didn't have that experience. The people of, of Venice were amazing. And even the taxi cab drivers, I just talking to them, or I'm sorry, taxi boat drivers. It was just great. I loved it. Really, I loved it. They were so kind. Um, and the food banged. God, I just I fucking love Venice. Go to Venice. Okay, I have five minutes. I need to tell you guys about my Vietnam story. And yes, I know. Yes, Grandpa ate napalm off of a, a, a poor Vietnamese woman's, you know, breast. I don't care what your grandfather went through. This was my hell, all right? I have a connecting flight in Newark on my way home, all right? Not a big deal. By the way, Alex has her own hell story on her own. She had a different flight issue. All, everything was fucked. All, everyone's flights got fucked. Everyone had to take different flights. It was brutal. So I'm in Newark. I'm steady vibing. By the way, a fan came up to me on my flight and just did the weirdest interaction. They went, you're wubby. And I went, yes. And they said, I love your stream. Okay, bye. And they walked to the back of the plane. But I love when a fan sees me in first class. That always makes me feel so cool. I feel like catching me in coach would be just so like, I'd be like, can you not take a photo of me? Like just, or can you tell people that I was flying the plane or something? Please just don't look at me. Connecting flight New York back to San Diego, straight shot, already made it out of Venice, 10 hour flight, brutal, that's fine. Now we're in Newark, we're on American soil, let's go, America number one, guns, okay? Big booty black women back in America, boom. Gotta catch my flight, small layover, that's fine. Flight gets delayed due to weather conditions. Uh-oh, stinky, fine. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Flight gets delayed due to weather conditions. Okay, starting to get nervous. Very, very tired at this point. You guys know how it is exhausted flight just gets delayed i've now been in the newark airport all day all day okay finally at like god 10 or 11 o'clock at night everything's fucked i'm gonna be getting to san diego in the a.m it's all fucked but whatever at least i'm getting home fine i'm falling asleep in my seat we get on the flight i'm sitting there i'm just passed out i'm just dying in my seat i can't even stay awake we're taxing. I'm noticing we're taxing for a long time, and then we stop moving. Three and a half hours pass. The captain gets on the thing. Hey, uh, sorry about this, folks. This is something you never want to hear, uh, but we're actually going to have to return to gate because uh, the weather conditions aren't going to let us fly, so we're going to take you guys back now. So sorry, everybody. Get shit on. Go fuck yourself. Uh, if you kill yourself, it's on you. Your family will miss you. Have a good night. And everyone's freaking out. There are people standing up just getting into it with the flight attendants, which I don't agree to, to do. I just sat there. I'm just weeping. I get off the plane, okay, and everyone just gathered around the gate. And I go up to the guy and I go, hey, is the flight canceled? Like, what should we be doing? He goes, oh, he's not canceled. He had an accent. It was great. It's not canceled. You're fine. Just stay here. Fucking 30 seconds after, he goes. And I go, what's that? And he goes, flight's canceled. He pulls up the thing. Hey, th this is the worst part about when your whole day is ruined. Here's the worst part. This is all you get. This is it. This is all you get. Hey, everyone. I'm so sorry to announce uh, the flight is canceled. Uh, please uh, go to the customer service desk for more information. Bye. Hey, you haven't slept in a full day. In 24 hours, you haven't slept. Uh, you have no way home. You don't know when you're going to get home because everything's getting canceled due to the weather. Uh, figure it out. Bye. No, 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 no. Bye. Bye. Go to the customer service desk. Every flight is being canceled. Every flight is being canceled out of New York. Newark. Uh, there is a line around the, through the whole airport. And I go, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm not going to deal with this. I pull up my phone. I, I rebook from my phone. I get a hotel for the night and I don't know how to describe this feeling. It is soul crushing to board a plane that exhausted just to deboard and like, I, I, I know this is maybe emotional and maybe I'm a baby, but like, I, 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 I like wanted to cry. It's, I know this sounds so fucked up, but like, it's hard to explain. Oh, I'm going home. I'm on the plane. I'm going home. I'm going finally. And three hours pass on that plane after an already seven hour delay and being like, get off, go find a hotel or sleep here. I wanted to cry. So I calm down hotel, get a nice night's sleep. I have another flight the next day, uh, at like five or 6 PM. I get a nice night. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make it home in time for Sunday for a Sunday stream, get to the airport, clear skies. Everything's looking good. Announcement comes over. Hey, everyone. Flights are going to be delayed or canceled because of thunderstorm weather conditions. So we'll see how it goes. And this is when I get on with Booty. And I go, Booty, you need to start 
figuring this out to do a stream remote, I'm gonna, probably going to have to be here till Monday. Everything's going to be closed down till Monday. And this is when the camaraderie starts. I'm at my gate, which, by the way, every fucking hour they change the gate. It was like back in... The, have you ever seen the Newark airport? It is so fucking huge. Back and forth. Every fucking hour the gate was changed. I know time's up. I'm almost done. Long story short. Long story short. Started connecting with people. I met this lovely lady. She was a, San, a doctor in San Diego. I met this guy. I don't know what he did. We all started... Everyone was hanging out. We were like the San Diego homies, which, by the way, people from San Diego are so fucking nice, or at the very least, these people were. Everyone was getting along. We were all like, this fucking blows. I just want to get home. They were very cool. I loved them. They actually started to make me feel, like, safe. It was very weird. The airline should pay for your hotel, by the way. Oh, we're going to get to that. I'm not done yet. So it's getting delayed more and more, and this is where I, I was. I kind of just, I really think that I'm, I'm a, kind of a war veteran after this because I have PTSD. The flight keeps getting delayed. The airport's now empty, okay? The, the, our pilots are with us. We get delayed again. It is now the flight. We're onto a new gate. There is a very small plane at the gate. Will not fit all of us. And uh, it is, we're to be taking off at 12.55 now. Uh, 12.45. My original flight time was like five. Seven hour delay already. So I go up to the cap, or the, the captains are here. And a crowd forms around them. The captains get stopped at the gate. Everyone is just screaming questions to them. The captains are now getting like harassed. And, every, and the captains are trying to calm everyone down. And so I'm standing there just listening. And these fucking idiots, I just got to call them out. Hey, idiots, stop asking the captains personal questions about, well, I, I wanted this in my voucher. Shut the fuck up, okay? If you're going to ask the captain anything, keep it real. So I because I'm a, I'm a fucking badass Chad who takes control of situations. I cut this, this lady next to me is just yapping to the captain. I cut her off because the captain's like, I'm just trying to be honest, blah, blah, blah. So when he says that, I take over and I go, okay, can you just give it to us straight? Can you give us odds we're getting on this flight tonight? And he goes, 35%. And I go, okay, thank you. If you were in our position, what would you do right now? And he goes, if I were in your position, I'd probably start looking at hotels and other flights. And everyone goes, oh, God. So this is now night two. I am devastated. I am devastated, but I just walk away. I get on my phone. I call. I book another hotel for the night, and I start looking at other flights. I get it in my ready to go to cancel and rebook waiting. So the captains, everyone's talking to them. I overhear, why, what's taking so long? We don't have a plane. There is no plane for us currently because everything's so backed up, okay? The pilots are going to time out. They can no longer work unless we are in the air by one o'clock. We have to be in the air at one, okay? So eventually we get a plane, the pilots board the plane, all right? And this is where I know, this is where I know the, the pilots knew how much United was fucking us because I've never heard a pilot be so real. The pilot comes off the plane and grabs the intercom. Hey guys, all right, listen, I'm gonna keep it real. Here's the situation. We have no cleaning crew. We're trying to find one right now. We cannot take off without one. Also, we are down one flight attendant because our flight attendant timed out. We're calling someone, they're driving here right now. Um, he's like, we're gonna try to get you guys back to San Diego. We're working, okay, bye. Goes back on the plane. I'm like, I've never seen a pilot do that. Homeboy is keeping it real with us. We're all just, everyone's just sitting there like praying. Flight attendant walks up. Everyone's fucking clapping for her. We're cheering for her. I didn't clap. Okay. I ain't going to clap for this. I'm not going to clap. I'm going to clap. It's like you shot me in the chest and you're going to give me a band-aid. I'm not going to fucking clap for you. Stupid bitch. Everyone's clapping. Everyone's hanging out. It's got good vibes. San Diego, good vibes. Everyone's trying to stay positive. Okay. Then cleaning crew. Hey, everyone. We got a cleaning crew. And then this one, the pilot, I'm like, the pilot said this, and I nearly wanted to die. He goes, we got a cleaning crew. Guys, it's looking pretty good. We're going to get you home tonight. And I'm like, if he's going to say that and not get us home, I'm going to have a meltdown. So we get on. Finally, we start boarding. Everyone is, I mean, it has been hell. It is now like, God, it's like 1 a.m. at this point. The pilots go, hey, we timed out. But we, he's like, I called somebody. I don't know. He did something. He's like, we've extended the time to two. We have to be in the air by two now or we, this flight is not taking off. We board. The, the doors close at 1.30 a.m. And uh, we start taxiing. We get in the air with like two minutes to spare. I mean, I was like, I, I, I don't want to share too much, but I was like legitimately emotional. I got back home back in my house at like 6 a.m. last night or this morning. 
I'm very tired. Everything's very rushed, but I did not want to miss stream for anything. Because I, I, I need to stream. I want to see you guys. It's been too long. Here's what I'm going to leave you with. I know this situation fucked me up. I'm telling what's like almost two and a half days worth of panic in five minutes. So it's hard to understand how much this fucks you up a little bit. Obviously nothing long-term, obviously. But like last night when I was sleeping, I panic woke up two times in my sleep because I was just, I'm like, I'm gonna miss my flight. And then it's like, oh, I'm not, I'm, I have nothing to worry about. I can just lay here. Oh, it was so, like, people were, you guys have to understand. It was a whole day of people crying, people screaming, people getting into it with whoever they could. And I'm just sitting there like, I just want to fucking go home. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how many people want you to be home. I'm just fucking sitting here with everybody else. I'm sitting here with this bozo. This Who the fuck is this guy? I don't know. He's being nice. I'm just fucking sitting here. You're still in Newark. Wake up. Don't say that. It's just sensory overload to total exhaustion. You've been stuck in an airport, haven't you? The dude, one of the dudes who I was talking to, he had been there for four days. This was his third flight he was on. The other two got canceled. I was like, brother, I would have, I would have hung myself in the bathroom by now. Anyway, I made it home. It was amazing. I could cry, see my kitties, you know, just being in my house, laying on my floor. I could cry. So in Venice, there is an area called Murano Glassblowing. We went to the oldest Murano Glassblowing factory. It was amazing. It was amazing. We watched an old man blow glass. It was incredible. I loved it. Um, and they have a lot of cool blown glass there. And I bought some blown glass to show to stream. But I bought what I believe to be the most unique piece of blown glass I've ever seen. An old man blew you? Not quite. This came all the way from Venice, Italy. And there's one artist there who does Jewish blown glass. And I found this piece to be very unique. <laughs> so here is my blown glass all the way from Venice that I purchased. This is, um, well, it is, it's from the Jewish faith. And it is, uh, well, it's a, it's a little mini... Um, circumcision. It's my little mini Jewish circumcision glass blow. Um. <laughs> the baby's kind of bricked. Hold on, let's see if we can get... The baby's kind of bricked, not gonna lie. And I love that they gave the baby a little Jew hair, too. So, um... Thank you, Booty, for reminding me of that. Where's the jar? Yo, ban that person, bro. What the fuck? Or at least tell him out. Give him time on that one. Will I be after getting home? What is this? Leave me alone! Ah! Akira! <laughs> bro, the fucking terminal is a little triggering. I'm not gonna lie.